So today we have a very interesting video that will further clarify a lot of things for you. I'm going to show you things at the uh, upper intellectual level and then on the street, on the ground level. Okay, In America, when it comes to Christianity, supporting Israel and supporting Zionism and supporting the removal of the misogynists there and rebuilding the temple. This is a Israeli newspaper, Herod's, okay? And cross-questioning, why do many Christians believe Jesus will appear after Jews re rebuild the temple? So they believe Jesus will reappear. This is why Christians support Israel. They want Jesus to come back, and that won't happen till Jews rebuild the temple, okay? And I've been trying to explain this, and uh, this is the reason I'm explaining it. Now... This also explains a lot of other things. Why do so many politicians so ask, listen? Ask the audience, how is it that we are taking the word of Hamas? How is it that we are taking the words here of our enemies? And we are using them to point to Israel. Why, why? Does anybody here have an answer on, Pastor, maybe you have an answer. Why are the American people buying into this? American people are buying into this because they do not recognize Israel's relationship to history, to the Word of God, and to what they mean to America as a democracy. America should stand by Israel because Israel is the only democracy in the Middle East. Israel has been America's friend who votes with us more in the UN than any other nation. Israel also has also. a very unique relationship with a superpower that a secular society in America does not recognize, and that would be God Almighty. God has created Israel. God has said, I am the defender of Israel, for he that keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. God has said through the prophet Joel that any nation, that would include America, who tries to divide the land of Israel or the city of Jerusalem will be brought to judgment. Therefore, it's very clear to say that the day America turns its back on Israel, God will turn its back on America. Do you think that so these, this is how the, the, the politicians are blackmailed by the, by the largest voting bloc in America, which is the right-wing Christians, right? And they have organizations, the right-wing has organizations, you know, like uh, this uh, Christian coalition, that's, and then you also have uh, organizations like um, uh, you can say Christians United for Israel, right? And it's all about you have to support. So this is like the more intellectual aspect of this, right? Um, now I'm going to show you what's happening on the streets. Uh, okay, and so let's listen. This is a rabbi, and he's talking to this Christian pastor. So he's a pastor. Uh, and he's a street pastor. He street he preaches on the street, and so they're talking now. Last point. Get the last word in, so you felt you accomplished something. Because we got people we need to convert. Go ahead. We don't need your help in anything, way, shape, or form. All we need is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the God of Moses, Moshe Rabbeinu. That's all we need is His Torah and and the land of Israel when it's back in the hands of Jews who believe in the Torah. So when it's back in the hands means when they have rebuilt their temple. The Jews have rebuilt their temple. Okay? Uh, let's see if I can make the screen a little bit better. And... Uh, you will see, without our embracing Jesus, without our accepting that sacrifice, or what you call a blood sacrifice, we will rebuild the third temple, we will do animal sacrifice... We will rebuild the third temple. And we all know where the third temple is going to be. Vices again, and God will give us the whole of, of Israel all the way up to the Euphrates River and down to the Nile River. We'll have the greater Israel that we've always dreamed of, and we won't have to believe in Jesus to get it. That's what you guys are, maybe you'll... So that's the greater Israel plan. But it's, it's based upon, you know, rebuilding the temple, and then the Messiah comes. Okay, and I'm going to talk about this in a little bit. Uh... So let's also now listen to this. He was called a start, or he was called a ball, or you he was need called an animal sacrifice. Moses commands an animal sacrifice. Animal sacrifice means a, a temple. Well, you know, like when we go to Hajj, we have the animal sacrifice. 
So that he's saying you have to have your temple, your qibla, where you can offer the animal sacrifices, okay? Jesus is my Lamb of God. Yeah, okay, but so where is your animal sacrifice? We pray every day in our... our, in our That's our, lovely. I'm and impressed. that takes the place where, until no, we have doesn't. an altar again. Moses commands a blood right. sacrifice. And we're not able to do it now because the Israeli government block us from doing our sacrifices. No, because... Muslims own that temple. No, they don't. Yes, they do. We technically and you guys don't have liberate. a backbone to take it back. It's not me. You're dividing between me and other Jews. I have nothing to do with the Israeli government. They are in the wrong. They are not listening to God. They're like they, Esau. They've given up their birthright. The, the, and, I agree and, with you. And, and what I are you agree doing? with so you see that that's a rabbi and a pastor talking and the ra it is the pastor who is forcing the Jews build your temple, get Jesus back, you know. And here again. He may have been, but that was right. idolatry. That was idolatry. That is not Judaism. We were for Jews. They're talking about Jesus being God here. To worship Judaism. We want Jews to worship God. There's only one God. We don't need an intermediary. Are you trying to convert us to Judaism? No, I'm not trying to say uh, anything. I'm going to be offended I'm just, if you're I'm trying to convert you, us. You're trying I'm to convert trying, us. I'm just trying to, to tell you that your only purpose being here is to try and convert us. I know. And that you is offensive in a festival. No, Fine, you but you'll still walk to the next one. You can and you'll hope that the next one stays and I'm gets converted. I'm only here talking because you came up to me, or I'd be walking. Right. If you were here only for supporting Israel and... Your right to be There's in a, a lot of t-shirts that are flying around. I don't turn, think about. You would turn I don't these like t-shirts inside and out I right now. No, it's not. Yeah, it's you're not here to convert us. Go get LAPD. You see, the t-shirt says Jesus, so he that doesn't like that. Go what? Go get LAPD. I don't care to get LAPD. If, if this is I can wrong, stand up for myself. I don't need. I don't. Yeah. I don't need. I don't need. I don't need them to fight my battles. I'm fighting you right now by telling you that you are here only as a provocation. But your game is weak. So, your game is weak. You got if nothing. I leave, you're going to give me my $10 back plus parking. All right. So that's enough of laughter there. Um, I was actually expecting something else to happen. But uh, here, let's watch this. This is very interesting. The Bible says God hated Esau because he gave up his birthright. That's what God says. And how much more modern day Israel does God hate because they're giving away that land? Even if America says give it away. Palestine. If I were involved in Israel, don't give it to your nation, your enemy. That is yours of God. If God hated Esau just for that birthright, don't give up that land. And that's taken, take it from me, just a Gentile dog. I'm not even a true Hebrew. That's not true. Aren't you a pastor? Yes, I am. There's no term Gentile dog. I, I, I will say that about myself. You know, Gentile. Judaism. Gentile means non-Jewish, and Jews look down upon Gentiles, meaning those that are not Jewish. So he's calling himself a Gentile dog. And then he goes on to say, I've been called a Gentile dog by Jews, as you'll see. It is very respectful to all people. It is. It, 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 it says that Jews are, are responsible uh, to, to, to do the laws that are commanded by God, that for them in particular. And... Non-Jews have their own particular laws, and, and we are required to be respectful to and everyone. In America, 2018, you're obligated to say this. I can go to some Orthodox areas where they will actually refer to you as a Gentile dog. It's not a problem. I'm just happy being... Not in America. Uh, we are in America. No, no, but uh, where have you gone where anyone referred to you in such uh, a way? Actually, Brooklyn. Actually, Brooklyn, New York, and certain parts here in West L.A. Uh, on Passover. On Passover, we well, what, what were you doing? Uh, we were preaching uh, the Messiah. And so they didn't take that too kindly. But at least they didn't beat me like Dearborn did. <laughs> I'm an equal opportunity rebuker. Now, let me ask you this. What's your take on Islam as, as Jewish? So it, part of Islam is uh, to uh, convert everyone else. And, and they, they, they're really a, they, they pose as a religion. But in many ways, they have a militaristic... And, um, and and they're, they're 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 trying to conquer the world, and and that infringes on other people's rights to believe. Absolutely. And and so I believe that Jews. Now you heard about how they want the greater Israel. That does not infringe, and Palestine is their birthright. That doesn't infringe. But Islam is materialistic, a material, uh, military, uh, military oriented. Uh, militaristic, militaristic. That's the word, right? So now here is a Jew. Trying to tell a Christian, hey, we're with you, you know, we don't like Islam and you don't like Islam and we don't, both don't like Islam, so what are we fighting about? 
But the Christian continues saying, hey, but you're disobeying God if you don't build the temple. Hurry up and build the temple. And Christians need, need to unite in, in order to support a belief in God and, and to uh, rally around our common enemy, which is this Islam, which threatens both of us. And they are more than an enemy. Uh, they, they are wicked. And matter of fact, I'll be very blunt because I usually am. They are the bastard religion. That's according to our book. They are the bastard child, bastard religion. Nobody likes to use the B word because it's not politically correct. But that's who they are. And uh, uh, we are thankful for our military to support Israel. We're the 500-pound gorilla. Israel is only the size of Rhode Island surrounded by enemies. So what, so what would you say about mainline Protestant movements that are backing a, st a strong U.S. pressure to create a Palestinian Muslim state? Uh, I think... Most Christians are lukewarm. I preach against Christianity more than any other religion. They're about as lukewarm and phony as it gets. And so uh, when they actually support Palestine, that really gets my butt blood boiling. God gave that real estate to Israel. They're to give it up, even if our, our government says to give it to them. No, that was God's given right to you. And like I said, if God's going to hate Esau for giving up his birthright, how much more that land that God gave you? We're in a trouble today because Israel gave up that land. And so, uh, what would happen to America if uh, America loses its favor with God on, on the account of creating a Palestinian state carved out of the Holy Land? That's a fantastic question. What would happen to Now remember, who's asking this question? A Jew is asking these questions, right? And they're all what we call leading questions that give an answer they want to hear. America, if we actually turn our back on Israel and allow the enemy, the same thing that happened to Europe, Napoleon, all of the Germany, they all have one common denominator. They despise Israel in one way. So I support our President Trump, who actually on this 70th year anniversary for Israel is bringing the embassy where it should be. All the other presidents said it should have happened. He'd done it. We've Meaning bringing the embassy to Jerusalem. That's one step to creating the greatest... Great. So you bring the embassy to Israel, then the next step after that, the next big one, is going to be build the temple. Then the next one big one is to build the greater Israel, which you saw that rabbi talk about, right? Learned ...by other countries who, who were actually big, but had one problem. They despised Israel. But we don't. This is why we're willing to send our troops our soldiers to help them and to keep that battle out in that dumb sandbox that those Muslims call home and not bring it here to America. Now, America has never fought on behalf of Israel thus far, but if Israel... This is another leading question. America has never fought on behalf of Israel so far. ...acts preemptively or gets involved, engaged with Iran and maybe Russia, uh, what do you think America ought to do? Sit idly by? Uh, I think uh, that uh, that statement that America has never been involved is not true. I believe our government is so much involved in warring with Israel, giving them bombs, giving them intel. I think we've done it, but we've learned not to have our fingerprints behind it. Um, don't forget, it was because of what took place in Germany right now that, that America got involved and shut down Hitler. So we did get involved in a lot of in a lot of ways, and if uh, if they start bombing Israel, I don't think Trump would lose one meal or miss a sleep, if, and he would go in and attack it. And he has my vote to do so. I would support. So keep in mind, how did Trump come into the office? It was people like this guy that voted for him. It's the Christian Coalition. It's Christians United for Israel. These are the people that are putting the pressure on the politicians that if you don't support Israel, America will fall my president on that. Again, I'm a Christian that loves Israel, and if you're a Christian that actually supports Palestine, I say turn in your Jesus Christ uh, badge. You are nothing about God nor the Bible. And so uh, uh, we need to support Israel, pray for Israel. A lot of takfir going on there amongst each other. And still continue to be the 300-pound gorilla, and, and actually give those Muslims their 72 virgins if that's what they want. Why is Israel so important to Christians? It's Bible prophecy. And it's not Israel in the sense of the people. It's the piece of real estate. You look at Israel today, you got more homosexual parades in Jerusalem than they do here in Los Angeles. You've got a lot of things going on. But that real estate has always been very much Bible prophecy. And so we need to keep our ears to the track when it comes to Israel.
there is a Jesus and he does return to earth, where would he return? Uh, he's not going to uh, touch down. He's going to come into sky. And so uh, I, I believe when he does return, uh, the Jews do believe that, that uh, the Messiah is going to have a king mentality. Uh, but there is a suffering Messiah too, if you read the book properly. And so Jesus Christ suffered. When he comes back again, he's going to be that king in the crowd, and he's going to rule mankind. Right. So when Jesus, quote unquote, will rule mankind, thereby Christians will rule mankind, that's not infringing on anyone's rights, right? So, so the Jews are waiting for the Messiah. Now watch this, this Jew, what he says. Very interesting, right? Oh, you're waiting for G the Messiah. We're waiting for the Messiah. So we're together against Islam. Messiah. The Christians are waiting for the recoming of the Messiah. So aren't we both in agreement? Aren't we both waiting for the same thing? That's a great question. But uh, unfortunately, the Jews killed the Messiah. Uh, which is why... Meaning you guys killed Jesus. Why, uh, you know, you had the temple built in Jerusalem. That's where Moses commanded uh, that animal sacrifice. But right now, today, who has that temple? Um, as far as I understand history, as for all accounts, the Romans killed the Messiah, not the Jews. So the Jews love to take off all the blame from themselves and say the Romans did it. Pontius Pilate did it. Why do you say that? That's because the, that, that's who took them. But who owns that piece of real estate now? Right now, where the temple was... There's a mosque from the bastard child. Shouldn't that be maybe because, oh, I don't know, Jews killed the Messiah? Shouldn't somebody scratch their head and say, wow, wait a minute, you know, look at what's going on. We fought in a war against Hitler, who was making lampshades out of us, and uh, we need to actually get uh, help from America. Where was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? To me, I believe, when you turn your back on God, as Hebrews have done, they killed their prophets, they killed God's spokesmen, and then when the Messiah came, they put him on the cross. Uh, so me as a Gentile, that's what I do. I believe that Jesus was the sacrifice, and as he was our sacrifice lamb, much like Jewish people needed to sacrifice lamb for the temple.